Welcome back to Emirates 24-7. Lights were once again switched off across the planet for one hour on Saturday as the sixth Earth Hour event looked to raise awareness about climate change. A few days on, we can look back at the event and ask about its impact. Is the issue of climate change on everyone's lips? Or is it just a PR stunt that merely distracts us for an hour each year? Well, to reveal more about the impact of Earth Hour and how it measures up from a PR perspective is Alexander McNabb, the director of Spot on PR. Alexander, welcome to the show. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Now, of course, that is the big question when it comes to things like Earth Hour. Is it really successful? Is it making an impact? Is it helping with climate change? What do you think? Well, uh, you, you just said it, it's once a year. So once a year, everybody switches their lights off and thinks they've done something to save the planet, pats themselves on the back and then goes back to whatever they were doing, which is usually consuming power and creating waste. So I think, yes, it's an awareness of a raising event and anything that is done to raise awareness and anything that it is done to, to help move the agenda forward, great. So you can't knock it for that. But I, I think the, the vast majority, uh, majority of us are aware there's a problem here. I, th I think we know. There is, I'm sure there are people that don't, but most of us know there is a problem here. There's more to it than just raising awareness. I mean, in terms of communications, raising awareness is always the easy part of things. You know, you can raise awareness by being a terrorist. You can raise awareness by splashing a huge message across a sign in the sky. You can raise awareness by just sheerly spending money. But if you want to create change and drive change, you have to do more. And there are four steps in communications for change. There's awareness, the easy bit, understanding, acceptance, and advocacy. The understanding bit is, you know, I understand this thing exists and its role as it pertains to me. Acceptance, I accept the benefits of changing my behavior. And advocacy, having done so, I will then go out and evangelize this change I've made in my behavior to other people. Now, those last three steps are the difficult ones. Awareness is the easy one. Just spend money and build awareness or have a big stunt and raise awareness. But how do you actually create change in people? I think that's the huge challenge. So, yeah, Earth Hour raises awareness. Great. Let's move on. Let's step it up and let's do things that are more important things that are more ongoing it's an hour a year that's not going to change people's behaviors what's going to change people's behaviors are smarter more thought through campaigns that stick in there and remind people of ways they can change doing better things to help people be able to change like BR in Sharjah is doing some great stuff in terms of recycling but we're still not segregating rubbish here we're across Europe they're doing that so maybe municipalities could be focusing on allowing that to happen enabling it and then telling us how we can go about doing it and so we can actually create some physical change instead of banging some drums and saying look look let's all be aware of this problem so do you think Earth Hour the campaign has been more effective in other countries perhaps where we are seeing more change where we are seeing people segregate rubbish for example is it that the UAE is behind the scheme of things, uh, is behind, or is it that Earth Hour as a whole, from the PR side of things, is not working? I, I think Earth Hour is, is an important event. I mean, it is celebrated globally, uh, but I think it's more important where it's part of an ongoing effort, where it's part of other things. By itself, it's simply, it's simply not enough. The Middle East in general, I think it's fair to say, is behind in, in all of this. Um, and I know that when we go home to visit people, our, our hosts are always running around after us, sort of lifting bins and just taking the wrong things we put in the wrong bins out because we're, just, we're not in the habit of doing this sort of stuff. And I think that's one of the problems is that as, as a population at the Emirates and the wider region, we're not in the habit of doing this stuff. So, yes, we're aware there's a problem. Are we as aware of what we could be doing about the problem? Is our awareness deeper? Is it becoming understanding? I don't think we have that understanding broadly. And in not having that understanding, what we're not doing is enabling things things that will help people to change their behaviours. Yes, we're seeing legislation coming in to reduce plastic bags and use energy efficient light bulbs. There is stuff happening, but if you look at, again, as I said, with BR in Sharjah, that's really accelerating the game. And I think maybe if we're accelerating our game rather than spending our time sp switching off lights for one hour a year, uh, I think that might be more of a positive step. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, just, just to turn things back to that switching off the lights one hour a year, uh, Earth Hour itself, just I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on Earth Hour here in the UAE and how you think it could be improved. Uh, obviously, you mentioned things like tying it up with, with larger campaigns, but specifically to the Earth Hour event, are, do you have any thoughts on that? I thought it went off wonderfully. I mean, I, I, I didn't participate myself, I, I confess. <laughs> um, but I saw the images today, the, the Burj Khalifa almost in darkness, and then the, the horse race last night, a symbolic switching off of lights. So, I mean, as I said, awareness, um, there's nothing wrong with awareness. Doing awareness is great. And I think in terms of awareness raising, yes, there it is, we're, we're aware of it. Now where's the follow-up? Now how are we going to build change? Now how are we going to 
argue with the population and get them to accept the benefit of change. That, that this is a real problem that we all face. It's not tomorrow's problem. It's a problem for our children. It, it, it's an issue for the whole world. And it's all very well saying, well, we're wealthy and we're in our little cocoon and let's just ignore it because we don't have to worry about it. I think that there is where the understanding part comes in, where the acceptance, the need to change our behaviours comes in. And I think that's where campaigns really should be focusing year round, not just one hour, year round. Mm -hmm. uh, specific just to the Middle East, though, I'm curious, when, when you're looking at you know, these kind of campaigns, uh, as, as someone doing PR, you know, what do you have to do here that differs from Europe? Obviously, you said that Europe is uh, it's technically ahead of us when it comes to environmental issues. How do you need to tell your campaigns here to really be effective for the Middle Eastern audience? The Middle East has got a number of differences about it. I mean, the first thing is you're talking about multiple countries and multiple languages and multiple dialects, even of Arabic. Um, you're also looking at vastly different attitudes. You know, the way that people in Beirut look at the environment to the way people in Riyadh look at the, the environment to the way that people here look at the environment. There are, there are changes there. So it's complicated and fragmented. It's very hard to tie together in one cohesive campaign. It can be done, but those sort of factors need to be, to be um, taken into account. Mm -hmm. And how do you engage people? How do you get them interested in something like the environment if that's not traditionally been a top priority for everybody here when you are dealing with so many different cultures? The route to engagement is always the same. It's always self-interest. If I want you to change, I have to give you benefit. I have to offer a benefit to change. And that needs to be ideally a stepped process. You can't just scream at people, there's a computer on your desk, now you're computerised. You know, there are, there are things that you've got to accept that change. You've got to be um, shown that using the computer is a good thing, that the computer is easy to use. And, and that's ideally be involved in the decision making as well so you feel that computer is something that you invited into your life that wasn't thrust into your life whether that be a computer or a soap powder or switching off the lights every now and then they're all the same things we have to have that that stepped benefit led um, path to change so what are the benefits of changing on the environment you save money you save resources you well at the end of the day you save the planet <laughs> well that oh, and and you know what's a better reason than that really well alexander thank you so much for joining us thank for you having the show Cheers. thank you